Hey there, you're watching Go On Shaw TV, where today we're talking about air quality. Coming up in today's show, Playground. Well, hello there. You are watching Go on Shaw TV, and we are talking about air quality. And I am here with our own Citizen of the Year, Patty Edwards. Patty, we're talking about air quality because there's an event coming up. What is it? It's an air quality and health forum, and it's going to be on uh, Thursday night, May 26th, from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock at the Multiplex. Now, there's a lot to tell you about why you should care about this, why you should come out. We're going to tell you about that in a minute. But first, we've got such a jam-packed full that we're going to go straight into a story that's all about health and well-being and walking with your dog. Sometimes it's the simple things in life, like walking, that are the most rewarding. I think walking is probably the easiest, especially when you're up <laughs> upper ages. Uh, then the other exercise is easier on your joints and so on and uh, keeps the heart beat going and just sustains uh, health. That's right. On this day, physical health was brought step by step to the forefront. Families are out here, you know, everybody's welcome and I see all kinds of people out here. Young, old, people in wheelchairs, people with walkers. It's just great. I'm so glad we have this facility to be able to use. The annual Walk With Your Dog has become quite a successful event in the Alberni Valley. It makes me feel good to see my patients out here and I, and I, I kind of know what they might be going through as far as uh, different uh, health problems and that and uh, it's a way for them to take part in their health care and to do something positive towards it. It's not really just about walking with your doctor, it's actually supporting health and supporting activities and I think when you see this many people out it just shows just one other way that Port Alberni really bands together. And even though Walk With Your Doc is only one day out of the year, doctors take this opportunity to share tips on how to boost your overall health. If you're gonna do two things to to improve your health, one would be quit smoking and the next would be exercise. Everything else, diet, medications and that, the effect of that is below the, the, the exercise and the quit and smoking. So if you're going to do two things, do those. For more information on activities in your area, contact your local Parks and Rec Department. Or get in touch with your doctor to go over an exercise plan that suits you. For Go, on Shaw TV, I'm Jenny Fortin. Carrie Robertson has always been a woman who took action. When she's seen a need, she stepped in to fill it. So when she and her friend Juliana McKaig realized there was a lack of resources available for First Nation parents, they naturally decided to do something. We went to our friends and former students of mine that were First Nations and asked if they thought it would be a good idea and they felt there was a real need for First Nations elders and parents and children to tell uh, parenting strategies. Sometimes you don't come with the skills needed to be a parent and uh, there's lots of research out there. Uh, in Aboriginal culture there's lots of knowledge there historically uh, to help parents out so I thought it was important for us to uh, share that information with the parents. Yeah, really Those strategies and the traditions behind them were shared through a series of three videos produced by Carrie and Juliana featuring the stories and voices of parents and elders. People like Irene Robinson, whose wisdom and teachings helped shape the narrative. Traditionally, this wouldn't even have been an issue because traditionally the children were taught from a young age how to think and how to make decisions. So that would not have come up traditionally, but today it does. 
the world has changed. And perhaps no group of parents feel that more acutely than those raising teenagers. Which is why the third and final video of the Parenting Path series was produced specifically for them. All this digital media and technology and stuff, it, it can be overwhelming. And uh, I think we've had a bit of a disconnect in families and so having this video as an opportunity is really important. And by focusing on traditional New Chunol teachings as they apply to parenting today, the finished videos present a rich and positive tapestry of life that has been as inspiring to its producers as to its viewers. We learned 10 times more from doing this film than what we came into it with. The wisdom and the positive things that are happening. Our people have been touched by negative stereotypes since the time of contact. And I think it's important because our people are good people. And not everybody knows that. There's still people who day, today who have only heard the negative stereotypes. We're coming out of a dark time and we're coming into the light. We're making change. And these ladies have come in right at the time when we're making change and they're putting that forward. <laughs> Parenting Your Young Teen. The third and final video in the Parenting Path video series will be shown publicly on Friday, May 27th at 7 p.m. in the United Church. Admission is free of charge and everyone is welcome to attend. For Go on Shaw TV, I'm Nancy Wilmot. Parenting Path videos have been used by groups and organizations and schools from as far away as Australia and it is so cool that they were produced right here in the Alberni Valley. So I'm thinking that the big launch of Parenting Your Young Teen will be a great time to come together and celebrate that. Be sure you stop in. Now we are still here in front of the Alberni Valley Multiplex talking about the Air Quality Forum that's coming up and Patty Edwards you, you've given us the date. Give it to us again. Um, it's going to be on Thursday night from 6 to 8, May 26th. And is there a charge for this form? It's free and there will be refreshments and people are welcome to come early and talk to the different groups and get information. Now, if people out there are wondering why should they care about air quality, isn't there somebody taking care of air quality out there, why should people care? Well, we share the air and uh, in the valley we have an issue with inversion and so all the different um, fine particulate matter from different, uh, from idling cars, from wood smoke and other different uh, um, commercial issues, we have to monitor the air and uh, we do have a problem with high respiratory illnesses in the valley. And there are going to be some experts out at this forum to speak to that, I think. Yes, we have a panel of four experts coming from um, various places. We have our own Dr. Hasselback is coming. He'll be on the panel of four people. And we also have um, the... Um, She's got a cheat sheet here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Earl Plain, who is from the Ministry of Environment. He's on our Air Quality Committee. He will be one of the panel members. Sarah Henderson from the Center of Disease Control. And Dr. Michael Brower, UBC. Uh, population and public health will be on the forum and then the public will have a chance to engage in discussions about the issues and possible solutions. And I know there are a lot of people out there that care about this issue. If you go online there's always conversation about um, the air quality so this is an opportunity to get some information to find out how your views can make an impact. So Patty thank you for telling us about it. Thank you. Now we've got lots more in this show. It is jam-packed full and we're going to head off now to a story about tall trees, fine woodworking and the Alberni Valley Hospice Society. They're a part of rainforest living trees so tall they seem to brush the sky and so wide that it would take a small army of children to circle them. Trees that are so much a part of our landscape that we sometimes forget how unique they are. Absolutely, I mean we take cedar and fir for granted in the sizes that we have here but if you go across the country there's trees that are they're so small compared to what we've got here. And as a master woodworker, Michael approaches the wood from these trees with particular reverence. It's, it's different from getting a uh, piece of hardwood. You don't know where it came from. It could have been back east, Pennsylvania, wherever. Whereas, whereas here we're uh, getting it from McLean's Mill or other local sources. And 
it, it has a totally different feel to it and you can respect the heritage. And respecting that heritage brings its own stress, like making the first cut into wood from a tree that might be centuries old. Not just to know the first cut, it's trying to find the piece of wood. I have almost find it takes longer to find the right piece of wood than to actually get started. And no project has required more care than this one. A project not being done for a paying customer, but as a donation. Well, this is going to be an eight-foot table uh, for the ho uh, Hospice Society and uh, to auction off, and we're so excited to be uh, doing this for them. The table will be auctioned at this year's Black Tie Gala, a fundraiser benefiting the society committed to compassionate end-of-life care. It's a gift in so many ways. I mean, it makes an, a phenomenal live auction item. They're putting their heart and their soul in, into the furniture that they make. And if they're taking extra care, it's because they know just how important this fundraiser is. It's vital. Um, Ty Watson and Hospice Society uh, requires tw between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars a month to sustain our operations and do the job that we do for the community. They can raise a lot of money in, in an evening, and it is their number one fundraiser. And whatever we can do to help, it's a small portion of what they can really do. So. A small portion, but a fabulous piece of furniture. This table is a local red cedar, custom-made, live-edge table that has gorgeous big slab legs and they've been etched with um, a very um, elegant sunflower. An elegant sunflower. The Hospice Society sunflower on this table valued in excess of $5,000. Quite a donation and quite a table. For Go on Shaw TV, I'm Nancy Wilmot. Words are like magic. Like you can cite, you can incite a riot with a word. You can make someone's day with a word. Um, put it on stage, show it, shine light on it. Maybe people will see things that they didn't see before. It can take hundreds of hours, many months, even years of practice to get the courage to step out on stage. But then again, every great actor had to start somewhere. There's definitely a process that goes into, you have to spend some time rereading, kind of tearing it apart, looking at it, and you, you find your character along the way. And as you can see, it takes courage to stand up and speak out. But this group of actors are even more daring than most, as this play deals with some pretty serious issues. You know, I'm First Nation and uh, you know, in, when I was in school, I was in a high school where there were only four First Nations students. So, you know, I've lived part of that in my life and I've been affected by it. My children have been affected by it. My family has, my parents have, so, and um, I've lived in this community for a long time and now I want to be able to give back. It really tears me up to see people that struggle with it on a daily basis, on a, um, it, it hurts, you know, I've, I feel like I've got a lot of empathy and I just, I, I want the information to be available to everyone, you know, I just think a lot of the stuff people don't realize they're doing, you know, and I think that this kind of uh, presentation of it is, is really uh, strong and, and to the point. Divided We Fall is a monologue-based play focusing on casual racism. The script was compiled locally through the Friendship Center with true stories that have happened recently. It's racism that quite often isn't detected by people because of social norms. So if you were to overlook someone because of their skin color and not pick them for something, or use an idiom that's not even acceptable anymore but you don't even know because it's been used so much. These are things that actually hurt people that we are unaware of and, and keep them down instead of raising them up and it's a very important project because it shines light on places that are in shadow right now. It's great to be part of the change, right? And and to encourage other people to be part of that change as well. So, you know, hopefully that'll, you know, change people's 
thoughts a little bit about things like that. And so, you know, they'll think, oh, wow, I probably said that at some point or I probably acted that way. So it's kind of neat to be able to make them revisit some of their thoughts about some of the things, and, you know, we're all guilty of, you know, saying things we probably shouldn't have. It's a powerful play that will be performed by some passionate actors. For Go on Shaw TV, I'm Jenny Fortin. Divided We Fall is playing at the Capitol Theatre on May 29th, 30th and 31st and June 1st. Tickets are completely free. You can pick them up at the Alberni Friendship Centre. Please take this in, important play. These folks need to be applauded when they're putting it on. Now, we're going to take a little bit of a break, but don't you go away. We're going to be right back. Well, welcome back. You are still watching Go on Shaw TV. I am still here with Citizen of the Year, Patty Edwards. We're talking about the Air Quality Forum that is coming up. And Patty, some folks are really severely affected by air quality in the valley, aren't they? Yes, there is a group called Better Breathers, and they will be present uh, to talk to people with, about their concerns with health issues. And I know um, over the years we've done various stories. There are people that really and truly can't open their windows during the summertime if people are, are having a campfire. Yeah, the inversion, it gets very difficult in the valley, and uh, so we want to monitor that at all times to try to minimize the issue. And of course the city is, you know, moving towards stronger bylaws, controlling outdoor burning, but the air shared isn't just within city limits. No, uh, we share the air with the whole valley, so we all have to be conscious of the issue. Absolutely. This is a great opportunity to raise consciousness. What are the dates and times again? It's next Thursday, May 26th, at, from 6 till 8 at the Multiplex. Patty, thank you so much for telling me about it. And congratulations on Citizen the World. Well chosen. <laughs> thank you. Now, it's going to be a wonderful event. Make sure you do come out. We're getting close to the end of our show, but before we say goodbye, we're going to head over to Central Port Alberni. Hey, we're in Central Port Alberni, but we're going to talk about a playground that needs some attention. Ask any youngster what they like best about school, and they might well say recess. That precious time spent outdoors and away from the classroom, with no lesson plan and no organized structure. Something that educators recognize as extremely important to healthy development. What we know about children is they need to play and they need to have that unstructured time. Uh, not only does it, it, it sometimes cater to different interests and different kids, it helps them to develop different skills. Different skills at different ages, which has caused a bit of a problem at Wood Elementary School, just one of the Alberni Valley Elementary Schools that is being reconfigured to accommodate more students and more grades. We've gone from K to 5 to K to 7. This school right now is K to 6, but next year we'll have K to 7 students. So the dynamic between the kids, we need we have different needs for primary um, and older kids. I'm too big for this. It's definitely very tight, and so we are looking at different ways that we can include uh, all our students, um, but with that growing student population and that sort of shrinking space, um, you know, how do we keep it uh, a good, engaging uh, and active community for everyone. And part of the challenge is right here in the schoolyard with a playground that's just not big or diverse enough for everybody. When the big kids aren't playing on the park, it feels okay, but when the big kids are playing on the park, it feels a bit crowded and stuff. And we have nowhere where else to play. Nowhere to play and no money in the budget to build a larger playground. Unfortunately, just the reality of our, our funding for, for schools and education right now, I mean, we don't have a lot of money to build uh, a lot of structures or invest in a lot of capital, really, in, anywhere in our schools. And that's where the Wood School Pack stepped in, making the decision to fundraise for a new I'm playground. Not try what I did last. We have our annual fun fair coming up. Um, Friday, May 27th. Uh, it's called the Circus. It's going to be lots of fun and prizes and games. We've kept it 25 cents per ticket um, just so that everybody can come out, have fun. It's a reasonable price. It's affordable. Um, we invite all the other schools or parents um, to come and just have fun. Have fun and help to build a new playground. Oh, and while you're there enjoying the cakewalk, the games and the prizes, you can also purchase a raffle ticket for a 48-inch smart TV. 
I, I think it's a great idea. I mean, we're very lucky. We have a great pack. They work hard. They work closely with us. It's a great need here. You know, we're here we are in the hub of recreation, uh, and there's lots of places for structured recreation. But when you think about just play, there really isn't a lot of uh, playgrounds and, and places for unstructured play. The Wood School Fun Fair is planned for Friday, May 27th from 5 to 7.30. For more information, visit their Facebook page. For Go on Shaw TV, I'm Nancy Wilmot. Welcome back to another edition of Art Avenue, coming to you from another mushroom that's popped up here in the Alberni Valley. So if you find any, let me know. Anyway, we'll get right to it and let you know what's happening in the Alberni Valley with all these wonderful events. And here's what's happening at Shars Landing. On Saturday, May 21st is Dagmar Killian, and they are the Netherland Friedrich Rune. Hopefully I've said that right. It is the piano is our forte, and that's classical piano. And Tuesday, May 24th is Port Alberni's very own Chase Spencer, his album release show, and that's I Indian Roots, so certainly come out and support wonderful local talent. And a few more events happening at Shars Landing on Wednesday, May 25th is Open Mic Own the Stage, and that's an amateur musician evening. Thursday, May 26th, in the early evening is Lounge Music with um, Port Alberni's own David Morton. And in the evening on Thursday, May 26th, is Spoken Open Word featuring Alberni's Fran Thiessen. So certainly stop on in and support local talent today. Well, that's it for another edition of Art Avenue, but before I go, a few reminders that our Solstice Arts Festival is coming up fast and furious in the Alberni Valley, so we want everyone to come out and help support the four local groups that are taking part in that. Tickets are available at the Roland Arts Centre and at Shars Landing. And that also lends me into Days with the Arts, which takes place during the Solstice Arts Festival, and tables are still available for that if you'd like to display or be an artisan on the grounds. And also, two teas on the terrace. They take place in July and August at the Roland Arts Centre, so tickets are available now at the Roland Art Center. So until next time, I'm Melissa Martin for Art Avenue. Welcome back. We're going to learn about the letter C's. There are four letter C's in the Nutrano language, and they all have a unique sound. The first one is T. T for Tihok. Tihok, meaning sour. The second C in this series is T and Tsa'ak for a river. The third letter is the wedge C and it says Ch just like CH does. And Chums is the first word. Chichichi -chi -chi is another one. The fourth C, it's a wedged and glottalized C. And the word for, uh, one word for that is Cha'ak, and that is water that we drink. Cha'ak. And we'll see you all next time. Chooch. You're going to be seeing a lot more of Deb Masso in the coming weeks as she teaches us a little bit of the new Chinese language, one word at a time. And I'm going to end today's show with one of the first words I learned in that language, chew. Until we meet again, be good to each other.